Congratulations on your new cruise scooter. A scooter is a great way to get around. It's fun, convenient, and economical. In this video, we'll introduce all the features of your scooter, and we'll show you how to operate it. If you take good care of your scooter and follow all of the required service intervals, you'll enjoy many miles of happy scootering. Your scooter comes with two sets of keys. The big key goes to the ignition switch, and it unlocks the underseat compartment. On this model, it also unlocks the glove box. The small key goes to the rear luggage box. To open it, just put the key in and turn it clockwise and open the lid. Don't put more than 10 pounds of items in this box or strap to the luggage rack. To close the box, lower the lid, turn the key counterclockwise, and you're all set. If you have this style of box, there's a latch that has to go up and hook onto a lip. To turn the key clockwise to open it. The bottom part of the latch swings out and the top part needs to come away. Then you can open the top. To close it, make sure the top part of the latch is pulled away. Lower the top. And then use your thumb to push the top part of the latch gently forward as you pull back on the bottom piece so that it goes up and hooks over the lip. Then you can push in the bottom part and turn the key. Now it's locked. Use the ignition key to open the underseat compartment. On this model, the fuel cap is here. This tray is a great place to store accessories, such as a cover, a helmet, and a lock. You'll also find your owner's manual here, as well as a complimentary toolkit. To close the seat, just lower the seat and give it a push to make sure it's latched. Your scooter has two stands. Right now it's on the straight stand. We recommend using the straight stand whenever possible. This makes it harder for your scooter to get knocked over. To get it off the straight stand, just push it forward. To get it on the straight stand, the straight stand has a place to put your foot. So start by putting your right foot on that lever. Now the scooter is level. Keep your left hand on the left handlebar. And with your right hand, lift up on the luggage rack. On this model, there's a plastic cover over the luggage rack, but don't lift from that. Lift from the metal frame. Now, at the same time, I'm going to lift with my right hand, and I'm going to step down with my right foot and rock the scooter up and back. And now it's on the straight stand. Your scooter also has a side stand. So to put the scooter on the side stand, when the scooter is vertical, just put your foot on the lever and lower the side stand, lean the scooter over, and that's it. To get it off the side stand, just straighten the scooter up and kick the lever up. Make sure you don't ride away with that side stand down. And let's take another look at putting the scooter on the straight stand from this side. So there's that lever that you put your foot on. Rock it up and back. Let's go over how to start your scooter. Take the ignition key, put it in the ignition, and turn it to the right one notch to the run position. Now let's look at the controls on the right side of the handlebars. The red switch is the run or kill switch. To the right, there's a circle with a line through it. That's the off position. So move the switch to the left to the run position. The switch has to be in this position in order for the engine to start and run. Below the kill switch is the electric start button. If you press that now, nothing will happen. That's because there's a safety switch built into the brake levers. Squeeze one of the brake levers and press that switch and the engine will turn over. Now if the engine is cold, you might need to twist the throttle a few times to get some fuel into the carburetor. In cold weather, it can take more than five minutes for your engine to completely warm up and respond normally to throttle inputs. During this time, don't rev your engine. Your scooter has an automatic choke. To turn off your engine, turn the ignition key counterclockwise one notch to the off position. You can leave the kill switch in the on position. 
but in an emergency, don't take your hands off the handlebars. Use your thumb to turn the kill switch off, and that will turn the engine off. If your scooter doesn't start right away, you might need to twist the throttle a few more times. If you've already done this, don't continue to turn the throttle or you'll flood the engine. Don't engage the electric starter for more than five seconds at a time and allow at least two minutes for it to cool down between attempts. If your battery is low or you just want to start your scooter the old school way, you can use the kickstart that's located on the side of the engine. Start by putting your scooter up on the straight stand. Make sure the kill switch is in the run position and make sure the ignition is on. Hold out the little bar that's on the side of the kickstart lever. And then holding the scooter, put your right foot on it and then step down in a smooth but swift manner. Once the scooter starts, pull back that lever. Notice to use the kickstart lever, you do not have to be squeezing one of the brakes. The lever on the left controls the rear brake and the lever on the right controls the front brake. It's dangerous to use just the front or the rear brake by itself. You always want to use them both together. Once the engine is running, the headlights will always be on. There's a low beam and a high beam. Depending on the model of scooter, there might be two lights or just one. The turn signal switch is on the left side of the handlebars. Move the switch to the left for the left turn signal, push it into the center to cancel, move it to the right for the right turn signal, and then push it into the center to cancel. The horn button is also located on the left side. Some scooters come equipped with a hazard light. That'll make all of the turn signals flash at the same time. Tire pressure is very important for safe riding. So it's always a good idea to check the tire pressure in both tires before you ride. The correct tire pressure can be found in the owner's manual and printed on the side of the tire. A simple gauge like this is all you need. Usually it's measured in PSI or pounds per square inch. Always check tire pressure when the tires are cold. Having the right amount of engine oil in your engine and getting regular oil changes are both key to keeping your scooter running well. We recommend checking your engine oil on a regular basis. To do that, put your scooter up on its straight stand like this. Be sure you're on level ground. You should get a clean rag for this. The oil filler port is located very close to the exhaust system, so you want to make sure that the engine is cool when you do this. Remove this cap. It's also a dipstick, so you want to use the rag to wipe off the oil. At the end, you'll see there are a bunch of X marks. This indicates the range of oil from low to full. We're going to put this back into the port. Don't thread it in. Just push it into the base of the threads. Take it back out and look at the oil level. You want it to be around the middle. If it's low, add a good quality four-stroke 10 weight 30 engine oil. Keep in mind that too much oil can be just as damaging to your engine as not enough. The fuel cap on some models is located under the seat. On the Agility, it's a locking cap and it's located here. Lift the flap and put the ignition key in and turn it counterclockwise 90 degrees. Don't bump the key when you have the cap out or the pins will not line up and you won't be able to put it back in. If you look inside the filler port, about three inches down, there's a flat plate. That's the full line. Never overfill your tank past that point. To put the agility cap back in, put it straight in, turn the key clockwise 90 degrees, remove it, and close your flap. Only use 93 octane fuel or higher in your scooter. Today's fuels use 10% ethanol and detergents. These can cause serious problems for the small jets and passageways in carbureted engines. Fuel with ethanol goes bad in as little as two weeks. Ethanol also attracts water, which can cause your engine to run poorly. If you're not going to ride your scooter for a few weeks, drain the fuel tank and the bowl at the bottom of the carburetor. You can drain the fuel tank by using a siphon hose into a, an approved can. Drain the carburetor bowl by unscrewing the little stop screw at the bottom of this drain here.
After you drain the fuel from the tank and the carburetor, start and run your engine until it stops by itself. We also recommend using an ethanol additive every time you add fuel. Your scooter is equipped with a 12 volt battery. It's located under the floorboards. If the electrical system is not responding, for example the horn doesn't work or the fuel gauge needle isn't moving, you may have a dead battery or a blown fuse. To access the battery and the fuse, remove the rubber floor mat. This is the battery compartment on the Adventure. Remove the screws that hold this panel down. Then lift the cover. The white plastic case is the fuse holder. Check this first, but be careful not to allow the positive and negative leads to touch each other. That will short out your electrical system. If the fuse has blown, you can use the spare. However, you should inspect the scooter for possible shorts first, otherwise the spare fuse may blow as well. If the fuse is okay, you probably have a dead battery. Leaving the ignition on can kill a battery very quickly. Cold weather will negatively affect your battery's performance, and leaving the scooter sitting for periods of time will also cause the battery to lose some of its charge. In these situations, it's handy to have a 12-volt battery charger. You just connect the alligator clips to the battery terminals. The black clip goes to the negative terminal, and the red clip goes to the positive terminal. Then you just plug the charger in and let it charge. This is a trickle charger, so there's no problem with overcharging your battery. It's also a good idea to leave one of these on your battery during the cold months. A cover like this will keep your scooter looking great. It'll also stop people from sitting on it when you're not around. If you're not going to ride your scooter for a while, we recommend that you drain the fuel from the fuel tank and the carburetor, and then run your scooter until it stops. It's also a good idea to remove the battery and store it in a warm, dry place and keep it charged. Now you have a nice scooter, but someone else might decide that they want it so we recommend always locking your scooter. Run the cable or the chain lock through one of the wheels, and if possible, lock it to a tree or a pole. There's also a steering lock that you can use. To use it, turn the handlebars all the way to the left. Then put the key in the ignition, and then push it in slightly and start turning it to the left. You should wiggle the handlebars just a little bit so that the pin can line up with the hole. And once it lines up, the key will turn, and then you can remove the key, but the handlebars are locked. To unlock the steering lock, put the key in, and again, slowly turn the key while gently wiggling the handlebars. Once it turns, you can remove the key, and now you can turn the handlebars. Your new scooter is a lot of fun to ride, and it's very economical to own and operate. But it's important to keep in mind that it has many components that require regular service. It has an engine, a fuel system, a transmission, an electrical system with a battery and a starter motor, and lights, it brakes and tires. Many of these things are wear items that require regular servicing and would be found on an automobile. So it's important to follow the required service intervals listed in your owner's manual. This way you can have a safe riding experience and you'll get the maximum enjoyment and value out of your scooter. The first... Now let's review some of the laws and regulations that apply to riding a scooter in Massachusetts. If you're going to be riding in another state, be sure to check with your local government. According to Massachusetts law, a motorized bicycle is defined as a non-pedal bicycle which has a motor and has a cylinder capacity of no more than 50 cubic centimeters, has an automatic transmission, and is capable of a maximum speed of not more than 30 miles per hour. Your cruise scooter complies with all of these regulations. That means you do not need a motorcycle driver's license, you don't need motor vehicle registration, and you don't need insurance. You just need to fill out a moped registration form like this and bring $40 to your local RMV. You will need to know the VIN or vehicle identification number for your scooter. It's located on a data plate down at the base of the steering column. The RMV will give you a decal to place on the rear fender of your scooter. This sticker is valid for two years. That's all there is to it. Riders of motorized bicycles do need to be at least 16 years of age and have a valid driver's license or learner's permit. In Massachusetts, motorized bicycles can use bike lanes adjacent to ways. However, recreational bike paths cannot be used. 
Motorized bicycle operators are subject to all state traffic laws and regulations, except an operator may keep to the right when passing a motor vehicle moving in a travel lane, and the operator shall signal when turning or stopping. Massachusetts law requires riders of motorized bicycles to wear a DOT-approved helmet and eye protection. Passengers should wear this equipment as well. Cruise sells all of this gear, and we also recommend gloves and a jacket. We advise against riding in flip-flops, high heels, and shorts. So now it's time to go out for a ride and enjoy your scooter. For more information, call us at 1-888-99-CRUISE. That's 888-992-7893 and visit us at cruisescooters.com. Have fun, ride safe, and tell us about your adventures.